Hello, this is an instructional video on how to develop your own film at home. This video will deal with loading film from your exposed cassette into a uh, tub for developing. This film will not deal with the chemical process, mixing or using the chemicals that will come in a later video. Uh, it's important to remember that when you do this, all of this needs to be done in dark, complete dark. So that means you could do it in your bathroom or another dark room with preferably no outside windows, uh, assuming that you can close off the seals around the doors well enough that no light will leak in. If you're in a room with a GFI like a bathroom, most uh, ground fault circuit interrupter electrical sockets have a little LED on them. You will want to cover that with some electrician's tape because that emits enough light to potentially damage film. But the biggest concern is making sure that no light leaks in from around the door. And that can mean putting on weather stripping or putting a towel around the bottom of the door or a sweep. But the room must be completely light proof. The other way to do it is in a dark bag, which is a bag that looks like a t-shirt, is completely black, has a zipper and velcro on, on the bottom, and then you put all of this in the bag, seal it, and then you reach your arms in through the t-shirt like extensions of it and do everything in the bag. That's my preferred way of doing it because it allows me to watch TV while I load the film into the cassettes. So these are the tools that you will need to perform this operation. A church key, very simple. A pair of scissors, I recommend blunt nose because if you're in a dark bag Pointed nose scissors can puncture the bag, ruin your bag, and any film that you're working on then as well. One exposed cassette of 35 millimeter film. A tub. This is a stainless steel tub with stainless steel reels. Two different types of reels. We'll get into this in a minute. Or a plastic tub with plastic reels. We'll get into this in a minute as well. Um, first off, let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages over plastic versus stainless steel. Plastic is substantially easier to load. These are also called quick load reels sometimes. You put the film between these notches and simply walk it forward. It's very easy to make sure that the film is loaded properly. Improperly loaded film, such as film which touches itself in the reel, can damage portions of the film during developing and you won't be able to get those negatives or those images back. Not the entire reel, just parts of it. Plastic does have some downsides though. If there's any moisture, even if you're in a dark bag, the moisture from your hands can cause the film to jam on the reels. Also, the plastic absorbs chemicals over time and uh, can cause you to have contact with chemicals you don't want to have contact with just by handling the reels. Also, this is a much larger basin than the stainless steel, even though they're both two reel basins. Um, I'm sorry, two roll basins. This one uses a substantially greater volume of chemicals, meaning that you will get fewer, fewer rolls of film per gallon if you use plastic over stainless steel. Um, plastic does have a Another advantage, in addition to being simpler to use, some plastic reels, not this one, can expand to accommodate 127 and 120 size film. We'll get into those films in a different video, uh, and I will show you how to use those, how to develop them. Uh, 127, maybe not. Almost no one shoots it anymore. But you can still buy it if you'd like to. I strongly recommend it because that com you know, because the company that makes it makes extremely good film and it's good to support them. Uh, the stainless steel reels look like this. They're simple stainless steel spirals. Nothing mechanical or moving on them. So your first step is to take the church key and the cassette and pry the cassette open. I'm not going to do that. This is a reusable cassette, but it opens just like a bottle um, or a can or anything like that. For a reusable cassette, just take your thumb on the bottom of the cassette, press, pop the bottom off, and now you can get at the film. Many films have a leader on them, which is angled. I'll demonstrate what it looks like here. So 
something about like that, generally with a curve, a little bit more professional looking than I just did. You'll want to cut so that you have a smooth face. About like that. And you're ready to start. I'm going to show you how to do this with plastic first. Most people use plastic. Plastic is a good way to get started on this because it is much simpler to use. Just take the film and the plastic reel. Oops. And all right. There we go. Feed it on a little bit, and now you just walk it forward. Walk. And this is very quick. This process goes extremely quickly. This this roll has about 45 exposures on it, or would if it weren't ruined. And as you can see, I'm making pretty quick progress on it. It's not bunching or binding, and as long as your film is loading approximately in line with the reel, and the reel is dry, you should not have bunching and binding problems. There we go. Plastic reels can also hold a little bit more, typically another maybe five to ten frames, than the stainless steel reels can. Now, after you've developed it, it's very simple to take it off of the plastic as well. It's just like this. done with that. I'm going to take a second here and approximately re-spool this so that it's at least, wow that's a mess, so that it's at least in a proper spiral. All right. This, once you take your film out of the cassette in the dark bag or in your bathroom or wherever, it's going to do this anyway. So uh, that's not a big deal. Now, I have two different types of stainless steel reels. They look exactly the same from the outside, but there's one difference. This type has a clip on it. As you can see, clip the film in there, and it holds it on so that as you spool the film, it's locked in place. The clip only is really important for about the first turn and a half. So this type has no clip. It has a U-shaped it's hard to see, but it has a U-shaped bar in it, and the film end goes in there, and then you hold your finger down on the film end, and by the time you've made the first turn, there's enough pressure on the film to hold it in place. Uh, these I actually find a little bit simpler to use, but they're uncommon. In fact, I've only seen four of them in my life. So I will show you how to use the type with the clip. You want to start off by flexing the end of the film so that you can get it into the spiral, into the reel. And then you just slide it into the clip. You'll put a little pressure on the clip as you're sliding it in. Now the clip's going to hold it in a certain position just like that. Now you will have to re-bow um, re it, but once you do that it becomes pretty simple as long as your film is lined up in the spiral. And I call this a spiral because it is literally two pieces of metal wound into a spiral with enough space in between for the film. So once you get it into the track, it's pretty easy to load. And as you can see, it's pretty quick. Um, these, uh, however, if you have not practiced with them a few times, there is the potential that the film can jump the track and touch the next layer, which can ruin the parts that's contacting on the next layer. That hasn't happened this time, um, fortunately. Now as you can see this only takes, this takes exactly 36 exposures. So I have a little bit of extra film here, but I will leave it on for the sake of the demonstration. Now once you have the film loaded, all you have to do is take the center spool off, and any, this part's not going to be usable, so I just fold the tape down if I can't get it off in the dark. Excuse me. Drop it in the tank. Put the tank lid on. Now I will take it out of the dark. One thing I like to do is run electrician's tape around the seam or about around the joint in um, on my stainless steel tanks because it keeps the tanks from leaking and I don't like my hands smelling like chemicals. I'm strange that way. So that 
provides once that's on it provides a seal and it also guarantees that if i accidentally drop the tank in the sink where i'm doing my chemical processing that it doesn't pop open and ruin my film now one last consideration when using chemicals the plastic is much easier to pour into it has a larger opening you can pour faster because there's a larger void space here so it is harder to overflow with a plastic tank stainless steel that's about a half an ounce of overflow space so you need to pour a little bit more slowly but once uh, this is full with the cap on it is completely sealed I've with, with this when I have the electricians tape on I never have any chemical spill out of it until I'm ready to pour it out so that is how to load film onto stainless steel and plastic cassettes at home